we're live. Hello. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Doing well, Denise. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's great to see you. I know you've been a really busy promoting your uh, latest indie documentary, Witness Underground, and I've been helping you to share that everywhere. You've been, so it's been, you've been really helping good. a lot. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. been good. And I'm loving the response. I mean, we, we've actually got a Kickstarter up to um, 65% fulfilled, haven't we? Yeah, exactly. It's at, we're shooting for 20,000 and we're at, um, almost 13,000, 12,835. That's in dollars. Right and if you're in, uh, in yeah. pounds, like I am in the UK, our goal is about si just over 16,000 pounds and we are already 10,500. So yeah. we've got a week to go till the Saturday, the 18th of November. And I'm sure that you're going to really want to pledge by the time yeah. you've seen our interview. So and what's the thing? I think a lot of people will make it just thrown off by that like we we've made the this is the film coming out this is the film being available if you want to if you want to support the film you're actually getting the movie and the extras and all the stuff we've ever dreamed to create so yeah like okay. and all the music from the movie plus all and the soundtrack plus all the other music that came after the scene and then all the extended music and all the books including your book it's like it's yeah. not like, hey, we need your money. You've been donating money to a cult for 85 years. Now give it some some of it to us. It's like, you know, like support the movie and get get it because it's awesome. Yeah. Like a way more stuff than we've ever had available. It's it's actually you get the movie. Exactly, exactly. So um so you and I met in 2019 and we did your very first interview in your XJW doc series on uh, your patreon yeah. and that was for promoting my book which was rising from the ashes of jehovah's witnesses and uh so you've gone on from interviewing me who's um to, to actually do a series of interviews over the the years since then and then you decided to make this indie documentary so i'm exactly. going to all about that but first of all i'd love to play a three minute promo for everybody so they can see yeah so. let's do that we have the your video up first that we did um i mean but can you change it to the other video is that easy for you to do yeah I've got let's um let's have a look at what scott and i did back in 2019 to um okay. to promote my book <laughs> Matchbox houses, life rushes by, and I wonder why. Safe and sound, dead on the inside. Is my life gonna pass me by? Hi, everyone. This is Denise Wise, and she's just finished a book. So, we're gonna talk about her new book that just came out and some of her background. I've written a story about my life as a Jehovah's Witness and then coming out of that, and what I've done with my life since then how it's affected me and my family. And the book uh, that I can show you is um, called Rising from the Ashes of Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, so my author alias is Isis, all things. All right. <laughs> Okay, I've stopped sharing now, so hopefully I can hear I was you. Muted. Yeah, sorry, I was <laughs> muted. Um, that's the first interview I did, and it's kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah. Again, it's just like the very first just laptop podcast, have a conversation with somebody type interview. And I was excited that you reached out because um, I hadn't hadn't done that in a way to like promote or or show off someone's art before. And so sure. that was fun. It's kind of cool to watch. first time as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Because obviously that's my first book, and I've never – plucked up the courage to actually promote myself so <laughs> we were both new at that and um, yeah. Yeah, it went really well I, I loved it so yeah. uh, obviously you've uh, honed your movie making skills over the yeah. last few years and yeah I'd yeah, like I, to just uh, show everybody your yeah let's go for it we, yeah moment. the pictures are so special and and uh Ryan from the movie Ryan Sutter um 
him and I got together before the campaign. We're like, let's this is let's do this. Let's actually put the movie out there in the biggest way we can possibly imagine. Everything we've dreamed to put together, and then um, we put together this video. Okay, so let's go do ahead it. and share that. And it's been a lot of fun to make. Like it's it's a challenge, um, and the time crunch is crazy, but I've uh, been really enjoying uh, the process. Going. You have to share, you have to present again. And I'll put it up on stage. There we go. Maybe start it over. Nuclear go for what? Step with what, with what we have authorized. You'll be safe. Does that mean a documentary about artists escaping? Hi, I'm Ryan Sutter. For 16 years, I ran a record label for Jehovah's Witness artists. And Witness Underground is our feature documentary. Nuclear Gopher was a record label and online community of Jehovah's Witnesses who all did indie music. Within the confines of an elusive cult, an alternative music community thrived, deprogramming themselves through art. Poignant live performances punctuate tragic stories of loss to beautifully illuminate shunning by Jehovah's Witnesses. Hi, I'm Scott Homan. I am the director. I had this deep need to tell a very personal story. I didn't want to make a movie about me. With Nuclear Gopher, we have an incredible example of an undiscovered music scene, a lost collection of 30 plus albums and short films, a community to celebrate, a bond stronger than faith. There's a new documentary about the Jehovah's Witnesses every year, and they all follow a fairly similar pattern. They revel in the trauma and the sensationalism. This film's different. Everyone in this film navigated cult mind control, survived it, and chose to live a better life. Nuclear Gopher was a world of its own, with movies and music and memories and some of the greatest friendships and relationships of my life. Also, some of my favorite albums. And this movie celebrates and shares that, but also shows that creativity is a powerful force in our lives. Any of those people at the core of the scene later got out of the religion and used self-expression to process their trauma through compelling and powerful music. We've all lost someone close to us. But imagine everyone you've ever known choosing to cut you off. It's easy to get lost in anger towards religious leaders or organizations or people who are actually shunning you. But that's the purpose. It's a punishment you're supposed to suffer or crawl back. I wanted to show another perspective, another path that is based in self-empowerment, finding your own voice through music and art. In Ryan's story, I found something deeply relatable. Losses, not just of our families trapped inside, but of, of innocence, love, community, of great times hanging out with genuine people, the bond forged between artists. I used to be in a band myself with my brother. And I knew intuitively that with the power of music, we could cut to the emotional core of the story and make a powerful impact on society. We're raising finishing funds in order to distribute and release Witness Underground professionally. Even if you can't support the project financially, by sharing this in email, social media, and groups with friends and family, you're already helping us accomplish our goals. For maximum social impact, we want Witness Underground to be easy to find and watch on common streaming services. Your contribution will help us make it available everywhere. Thank you so much for supporting our campaign. Okay, so if you need to find the link, it's easy because it's www.witnessunderground.com. Takes you straight there and you can pledge. And basically you won't your funds won't go out of the account until the deadline, which is uh, November the 18th. 17th for USA, 18th for UK. 18th for UK, oh, it's yeah. Saturday here, yeah. yeah so Pacific yeah. midnight. Next Friday, midnight for Next California. Friday. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can pledge whatever you like. And then if we reach our total, the money will go out of your account. If we don't reach the total, what happens then, Scott? Um, you don't get charged anything ever. And uh, we will, we're going to be successful because you're going to help us. That's what's going to happen. We're going to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we'll have to start all over. So please help. <laughs> yeah, please take a look at it. It's it's like everything we've ever dreamed to create. And it's super exciting moment because 
um, we finished it. It's an award-winning film. It, it went, got to 11 film festivals and, and it was, it's been the time of our lives putting this out there and we've learned a lot. And now we've created the, the path to go fully independent and in our release which means um, we get to decide where it goes, where it lives, make the different agreements. Yeah. And we've already got a deal where it's in libraries. So like things are happening, mm. um, which is, it's exciting. And yeah. um, this is something we've been looking at and trying to figure out. And we finally figured it out and we just need a little bit of money to get there. Um, what the cool thing is you're not just giving us money. We're selling the film and the music. Um, so you get all the things that mm. are awesome for it. Yeah. And it's, That's it's like, it's not yeah. like you're getting a sticker and a poster, which a poster would be cool and a sticker would be cool, but like you're getting really cool stuff. You're getting a soundtrack to your future and the movie and all the stuff, like like the back end of it all. And mm. the community, we have a Discord, like jump in. It's all that we're trying to like gather all the creative people from this community and and expand that and maybe I'll collaborate to do something new in the future. But first this, we're like, where's exciting. the audience? Come yeah. and join us in this the, thing. The um trailblazer, Scott. Because, as you say, most a lot of the witnesses' um, movies or the people that have made movies like apostasy, mm -hmm. it's been a bit doom and gloom, a bit, oh, you know, this is what it's like being in this cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. But you're showing the fun side, the side that, yeah, you can be creative and look how much it's helped us and it was fun, you know. And yeah. also when people have left, um, the dreaded word shunning is obviously in the movie so if you just wanted to explain briefly what the shunning is then people yeah. will understand shunning is a, a little known word or concept the greater population of the planet basically it's complete cut off by family and community and people that leave a high control or a dangerous coercive cult a high control religion often face that kind of punishment and it's, it's one of the ways to de determine if, if you're in a healthy community or if you're not. If there's a dignified way to leave, people are like, oh, you're leaving? Oh, okay, cool. Let us know when you're back or if you ever want to hang out. And if it's like a coercive group, they're like, you must be following Satan. You're not one of us. Like, you're not allowed to talk. We're going to punish you now with emotional abuse. And it's a form of emotional abuse. Um, so that was my experience and what fueled why I wanted to tell this story was like, okay, it's not just um, a religion that is benign and people that are well-meaning are, are a part of it. It's, it's actually dangerous and it has affected my life in a terrible way. And I feel like I probably got dealt, although I got dealt the full shunning, um, I probably had a more balanced and like lighter version of the entire religious or cult experience. And I felt like, I have the emotional stability or maybe like the positive life situation where I can like, I can spend the time looking at this traumatic situation. Whereas a lot of people might not have that ability. So I want to make a movie about it part of as my activism, but also because I can, yeah. I don't think everyone can do that. So you and me both uh, qualify as apostates, um, otherwise known as heretics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we've not only left, been shunned and disfellowship, but we've also gone out there in the public view and talked about our experience, what goes on behind mm. closed doors in a cult. And the good luck stories are, you know, in the movie, you're focusing on this amazing group of youngsters who use rock music and making videos as an outlet and it also helped them to leave once they'd left. It helped them to heal, to carry on that healing process of just being creative and telling the world how they feel about it, you know, which is yeah, great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I think that kind of came out of like, I naturally had a desire to talk about, we're both, you and I have both been musicians or both are musicians. Um, and that has always drawn me like my whole life and I, I think I intuitively needed to work with people who are in that space just to like maybe to even get through the process of making the film. Mm. But I think through the making of it, I learned that the music itself and the self-expression, the movie making that they were doing and that I was doing um, the writing that some of the people in the film did, they became authors. Like that was the processing method to get through the trauma and then land after like process it and be done with it in a sense yeah. and then move on. Yeah, 
absolutely it's called purging <laughs> okay. so i did the same as you and um it's taken a long time over the last 30 years since i left to write the book and then to write a load of um, music tracks with a rock musician the latest ones and then you know also i've written a second book which is so much lighter and easier because it wasn't about this cult yeah. And it was fun, you know, it's just so now I've broken through to the really fun, creative side of that process. And I'm really enjoying that. And That's awesome. Yeah. I want to get there because I, I have this movie has been really heavy and personal and there is a light levity to the 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 opening in the end. It's like it's bookmarked with uh, beautiful, fun things, mm -hmm. um, which I, it was important to me to do that. But I'm really looking forward to what I do next, because for me, this movie is a, a story I started eight, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And I shot five years ago and uh, it's been done for years and it's like, we have to get it out in the world. So this is the getting it out moment, but I'm like, yeah. I've already shot another whole like short film, possibly another feature. Wow. Um, I have to decide on what I'm going to do with it in the edit. And then like, I want to make another thing and like, or I'm sort of finding the crew right now. So like as much as I'm excited to like, yeah, get witness underground. I'm also like, this is my team to make the next one, you know, and what are we going to do? That's like hopefully on a different topic. Cause I would like to have like a, awesome. let's, let's just celebrate and have some fun. <laughs> I know. I mean, I literally took 13 years to get that book published. When you interviewed me, that was 2019. I finished it and I'd moved out of the big city of London and moved to the country and it helped me to have more time to finish it. Mm -hmm. But I just got so intrigued by the place I'd moved to, which was all, medieval history in Norwich in Norfolk and so I started researching and writing the second book while I was finishing the first book and I think that's what got me through because the heaviness of having to go over those experiences write about what are the flags of a cult what you know what do you um, see going on behind closed doors which we've mentioned you know about paedophilia and how that's dealt with in the organization not very well um, so all the heavy stuff and then you know do all the joyful stuff and then um, just just feeling like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders once I had the book in my hands and, and I was able to just focus on the next project you know yeah but now that you know a few years have elapsed, I I feel quite joyful about the whole thing. I, I think I've purged all those those heavy emotions and just grateful for the process that that we've both been through, that mm -hmm. we've that we've really healed and that we can now help other people. You know, let's hope that anyone who's watching this will find it encouraging and be inspired, perhaps to do something similar. And if they want to yeah. join with either of us and be creative you know they can get in touch with us as well so that exactly and that's something i don't know that everyone in our greater team is down for most of them are though i think and like i want to create a environment where people that are interested in doing what you've done and what i've done reach out and like ask how to do it and yeah. we'll be there to sort of lend support in in at least like advice if not Definitely. like actually become like a consultant for their project in a sense like create a creative support yeah. system to help Definitely. people narrow the time it takes to go from i have an idea to i'm gonna go do it and finish it oh yeah i mean you have obviously did, done so much of that having to actually tout your movie around to indie festivals in the u.s and mm -hmm. um you, you visited how many was it 10 11 yeah we 11? got into 11 yeah that's a and lot then, <laughs> and i don't know if you remember camilla did enough she did debutante she's an ex-witness polish oh, woman yeah. in, in um Dublin um she did this beautiful film from the woman's perspective and um she I helped her she was my second interview um she was yeah. crowdfunding that film and then while we were just on the heels of finishing the crowd or the film festival run for Witness Underground she was in a film festival and going through all for, across UK Ireland and the States and yeah. so she's like hey I can't make it to the US can you rep the film so then I was on tour again with her film as a rep for her film which is really really fun and interesting and then I went to Ireland to help her with that or just meet her really I had a lot of fun but like I was now there's like a journey on Facebook thinking this guy's having too much fun here it's like <laughs> one party after the other you know and there was always the was after party after movie <laughs> screenings it's like I used yeah. to work in the movie industry and it, before mm -hmm. that in the music industry so I have actually seen that side and been mm -hmm. part of it but not for my own projects 
So I need to to do something like that as well, actually. Yeah. Have you yeah. thought about doing a book tour? I mean, I guess right now it's in Rising from the Ashes of the Jehovah's Witnesses is available on the Kickstarter right now. Yeah. And um, but so in a way we're we're inviting you on and and um uh, and I mean you're hosting this at the moment, but like this is like another book tour for for you in a way. Do you think you'll yeah. ever do like an in-person one? Uh, or have you ever tried that? Either the book tour or you know, we get we're actually we've got an album that we wrote, David Donnelly, oh, yeah, yeah. during the lockdown. And um, we mm-hmm. we wrote eleven tracks. And so what we're doing is we're oh, wow. releasing the singles as we go. So we've released cool. three singles already. Yeah. And we're just about to get the fourth one mastered and the the video finished. Very cool. Um, and then another one after that so yeah we're kind of cracking through and then obviously we'd love to start doing some local gigs and uh, see where we go from there very cool that's so fun I haven't performed live in so long but Mm. it's like it's a time of life like I don't know I'd spend like 10-15 hours preparing for a live a 30 minute live gig and it's all all of it's fun and then you perform and it's like okay this is you're like it's such a present moment yeah you're you're 100% in that moment with that audience Yep. Singing your own music is special. Mm. When's the last? When's the last time you performed? Well, uh, I did actually do a couple of um, small book fairs um, in the summer, where I was um, asked if I if I would uh, perform some of my songs as well. Oh, wow. So did yeah, you? I've done that a couple of times. Yeah, Very cool. that's awesome. Yeah, so that was good fun. I mean, not the rock songs because it wasn't the right atmosphere for that. It was. Um, like a mind, body, spirit type affair. Okay. So we did the acoustic versions, <laughs> um, and you know it's great. It's just um, it's something that I'd love to do some more of. So I'm working on that plan. Cool. And uh, what I wanted to ask you, Scott, is yeah. uh, how did you get into making movies? Because you were obviously you raised in the witnesses, then you were, and then you were um, a mechanic. Is that right? How did you go from that? to being a movie producer yeah the stint where i did mechanic work is a very short stint although i still do that i like i've swapped the engine and transmission on my own vehicle a number of times um because i have a volkswagen and you have to (laughs) but um, yeah that was like a survival situation i grew up fixing stuff but that was more like when the recession happened okay what can i do that can i actually get a job but I, i went to school for um electrical engineering okay movies that was the main question our high school. Yeah, I didn't know that you went to school for electrical engineering. So that's that's you know, it's yeah. such a departure what you're doing now, yeah. where They're you t- were. No one, everyone in the engineering world's like, you also make movies, and everyone in the film world's like, you have a boring engineering job. Like, don't tell anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I was a PA. Funny. It's really boring being a, a secretary all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's possible but, to make the transition. That's what we're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually an interesting point I'll get to is that, that like you can, you can change your career. You can be 50 years old and get out of this religion and then go do everything you dreamed of in yeah. actually a really, really short period of time because you're dedicated and you're an adult where I was trying to be a rock star when I was a teenager and I don't know how to do anything as a teen. You know, not to do anything when they're a teenager. And so like you kind of just, don't accomplish it very fast usually (laughs) or not at all take drugs and basically forget what you're supposed to be doing the objective of this was (laughs) right and you never learn dedication or like stick to things because you're Mm. a kid whereas if you're an adult you can knock something out of the park in a couple of years and make all the connections you need to make and be smart and strategic about it and like shorten the time it takes to accomplish Mm. your goals and live the dream and um there's a bunch of people on our team who've done that and we've all gotten out of the religion at different times but um gone for the arts and a lot of us have a lot of us have done that self-employed um, yeah most of my life's been self-employed i think that's like a there's a whole you could do a whole hours on this but not having university as an option in that religion forced every one of us to do something different mm-hmm. to try to find your own path and mine often was find someone who's an expert at the thing i want to do and build a relationship with them and then ask them to teach me how to do it and that's like such a crazy fast track I actually want to write a chapter of my future book about that, like getting paid to learn and like flip flip the coin, like university, you pay them to teach you something that they think is valuable. And they're a for-profit corporation who Mm -hmm. wants to maximize the amount of time and money you spend on their organization. And 
they want you to keep coming back for more and be a repeat customer. Where if you talk to the master of it, they're going to cut straight to the, well, this is how you make money. This is how you do the thing. This is what's important. This is what's not important. And like pretty soon you're like, you have 95% of what you need in 10% of the time. And it's amazing. And you got paid to learn it. Like that's like a very special thing that a lot of ex have figured out. And um, I don't know, you can get to where your goals fast. Sure. Yeah. I did that when I was working in those industries, you know, I was, um, finding out and observing how people got together and did co-writing and how to put on a showcase and you know and then with the writing I've teamed up with other writers and found out how to use Amazon how to upload my own books so that I don't have to use um, a publishing company anymore yeah and uh, yeah so learned a lot in the last few years and uh, bursting with new ideas all the time (laughs) so yeah there's a lot of parallels in that um indie indie publishing there's there's reasons like you like it's good to hire an editor and um it's there's good things to do that can like make your product better um as an and that's an indie decision to make but like getting it out and like avoiding the publisher like that can be a trap and like people think "Oh, oh i'm published or i'm my film is distributed by this company it could be amazing for your movie or your book but there's a lot of parallels to the path that we've both taken, which is to go fully independent. Um, that I realize it's it's the best thing for my for this film because those companies and the deals that are were, I've found and were like I've hired someone to get me offers to get me deals who's in the industry and I, I actually really like the guy. Um, I was just two different people that I worked with, and the deals they were able to get me were terrible deals where that company would own 100% of the rights to the movie, could shelve it if they want to, would package it in certain ways where they would take all the profits and I would never get anything. They wanted 30, 10 to $30,000 up front. They want to own the rights to the, whole, the movie for 25 years. And they also don't care about it. Like, I care deeply about this movie and I will do everything it takes for the rest of my life to make sure that it has the best potential to make affect change in the world. And for them, it's just one more title in a catalog of thousands. Yeah that's not a good situation. So oh. um, going fully independent allows us to do a lot of things mm-hmm. and keep the money that comes from it and build another, keep on telling important stories. And yeah. um, so the, I'm going to just come back to the Kickstarter. Yeah. Now. So Kickstarter is basically a place where you can crowdfund and it's going to help Scott to do two years of marketing, hopefully, and you want to stream Usually, yeah. these independently um, run streaming platforms like Apple and what, what are some of the others? Yeah, Tubi is the big one in the indie yeah. film world. And they're an ad base. They have eight ads in a, in the time of our the run, run time of our film, 80 minutes. It's like every eight to 12 minutes, I got to put in like, here's a commercial break at the, exactly this frame. And this is what will title the thing. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like you get a lot of control and Tubi pays really well from the ads that they do insert into the film. And then there's like 35, 38, something more with this particular platform we're using called Film Hub, where we can we can potentially get on all of them or some of them. They have to they have to submit and then they have to decide. Um, Tubi is the easiest to get on and they pay the best. And then there's a number of other creative outlets and eventually Amazon and Apple, even though they're the like some of the in terms of like the economics of it, the worst. But in terms of the social impact, some of the best because they're. Their audiences are gigantic. Amazon's by far the biggest in the world. Yeah. Tubi has like 1% share. And I think um, Amazon's like 16 or 18% share, something like that. But they pay like one penny per one hour of viewing. Whereas like the library deal we just got in, Mm -hmm. um, just again, the the weeds about it, they pay 50 cents for um, 30 second view. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like 50 times better than Amazon to be Mm -hmm. in a library for me or for our, our company. And the idea behind the library for kids was to educate them about the dangers of cults, right? That's that's the old drive. Yeah, I mean, it's not it. just for kids because it's not really a made for kids movie. I right. mean, people of all ages use it, libraries, but I, I mean, I haven't in a long time. So yeah, it might be more kids that are like getting access to this kind of film. Teenagers. Um, yeah, and it's I mean, it's an educational angle for sure, which okay. is a whole angle, right? So it's about. Not only, you know, what happens with cults or what, what the dangers are, but also, you know, for any any kids that are in that situation where they're um, 
under undue influence, as they call it, yeah. um, how to get out, how to That's be. That's a good point. I never. Influencing. Yeah. I never actually thought about that. Um, the teenagers who this might affect. Um, because I'm not a teenager anymore, but we are, the movie is basically about a group of teenagers who then make it out of this high control, unduly influenced um, organization. Exactly. So yeah, there's like, it's like a coming of age film for teens that they might like see a future path for themselves that they could be proud of or excited to like take on. Sure. And they're going to go, cool. what are those things that they're using to record in their basement? Tape recorder. What's that? Cassette. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so you got all this amazing footage of all this old kit, you know, where these two brothers go, Mum and Dad, is it okay if we do a rock band in the basement? You know. Mm-hmm. And then they obviously built it up from there and it had a huge following of hundreds of musicians coming through and yeah. playing and recording and making videos and all sorts of uh, fun things. So that's that's basically the story that you wanted to tell. And also where are they today? in their forties and what, what are they doing now? And, and yeah, so it's a great, it's a great synopsis really of the um, before, middle and after of that process. And um, yeah, just, just really to wrap it up, just want to say, you know, I'd like to know where, where, if you had the dream come true, where would you like the movie premiere to be? Oh, on the online movie premiere, like where would it be available? Oh, I mean, I think Netflix would be like the premier place because of their global um, people know who they are. They're such an, they've changed the world. Like Netflix was so cool to 15 years ago when they were just, um, you'd, you'd like rent a DVD and not go to Blockbuster and support the big mega corporations. Um, but now they're a machine, like they're crazy. Um, I think like a place like Vice would be pretty cool. Vice is a kind of an alternate world for kind of yeah telling exposing the truth or exposing something dark in the world i think that'd be kind of a a good place for it to land or even um what's the what's the one that's focused on horror and sci-fi i can't remember at the moment there's like a whole streaming service that actually has a huge market but it's it's like the darker side i'm I'm blowing it right now someone could oh you got some got some comments actually is there a link when, where uh, Derek's asking, where can he buy the book, your book? So right now it's available in the Kickstarter. So go to witnessunderground.com and you can yeah. get her book. That's the <laughs> best place to get it. Oh, Shudder, thank you. I'll just share the other... again so that you can yeah. um, see what it looks like. Uh, thank you for it. the support, Derek. We appreciate it and all of your help. Derek joined our, our uh, Discord recently after trying to, and helps us get the word out during the Kickstarter. So thank you for being here as well. Okay. Okay, Here we go. So it's witnessunderground.com diverts to this Kickstarter. And then as we scroll down, you'll be able to see all the info. um, And then if you pledge, there's different stratas that you can pledge. So you can start off with the $10. And then go on and tells you all about the people in the movie. Um, and yeah, all the different packages. So here we've got the $10, the $25, which gives you the film. And then you've got all the extras coming up with the $50 pledge, bonus content, and some featured books, ebooks. And then, of course, you've got the big one. There, the hundred dollars nuclear gopher super package. And that one has her book. You can see it there. There's a whole bunch of books in front, and it's this one at the kind of sunset screen that we had at the opening of the video. Yeah, featured there. there like, yeah, rising there. from the ashes of Jehovah's Witnesses by ISIS. All things. Yeah, there are and then you've books. got the merch. nine total books. Wow, look at that! So the merch table is the is that the biggest. Is there another yes. one? Oh, no, there's one more, which is like is everything physical. It's like every CD that, that's available is digital, and the other packages is every single CD. So, like 32 actual physical things, actually physical music CDs, plus yeah. vinyl, plus the tape cassette, plus a VHS, plus like everything cool and vintage. Ryan's going to have it all packaged and handmade 
and put into like a special thing to send yeah. if you get the super merch table. You can geek out to your heart's yeah. content on that <laughs> one. And then you've got your uh, banana. Yeah, there's one more producer credit, associate producer credit. That gets your name in the credits and on IMDb. Uh-huh. And um, Down of a, Derek, was Derek just asked a good question. If you've already contributed, can you increase your backer level or are you locked in at what you first selected? If you just write a message and say, hey, I put in the amount of money to hit the other thing I want to upgrade, um, we'll take care of it on an individual basis. Um, so okay. as long as you write a message, we'll make sure that you get what you what you want. Okay. Well, you've got four backers for that one. So that's great. Yeah, we have one more associate producer left and then it's done. Um, and this, you can record your own song at the New Kid Girl for Studio. Ryan has an active studio. He's actually recording an artist yesterday. So he's he's sort of like, um, he's just busy. He's busy making music, which is really cool. Hmm. Um, so that's for $1,000. You can track your music there. And um, that's well, a special thing in Minneapolis. You know how much it costs to go in the studio. I did mates rates about 20 years ago. And it was one and a half thousand per track, and that's the, as a friend price. He's a you know, he was a professional producer yeah. who'd worked with um, Boy George and, and wow. Debbie Harry in her comeback years, and and so yeah, so it would have been three thousand pounds twenty years ago for a track. Otherwise, uh, yeah. so I, my dad had kind of kindly given us some money, and I decided to invest in doing. Uh, I think it was two tracks in the studio. And I never regretted that, you know, I, it was the best money I'd ever spent on something. Yeah. So this Amazing. is a like a bargain in comparison, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I was actually <laughs> kind of surprised. There's like hundreds of, of musicians in Minneapolis um, where, I mean, the studio is in Minneapolis, so you have to get there, but there's hundreds of musicians connected to this project um, and who know about it. And so I'm kind of surprised it hasn't gone already because that's like a really good bargain to have an entire um, studio plus the crew to record. Sure. And I mean, you've got the pick of people you could ask, oh, is there, are there any bass players or drummers or whatever? You could just yeah. get loads of help and support around yeah. that, couldn't you? Not and just like musicians, here. studio musicians, but also like all the equipment, all the expertise to record, um, plus people that are have been producing music for 30 years of their lives. Like this is yeah. what they do. Um, at your disposal. So if you have an idea for something, you can go track it and have it produced by the team there. Yeah. yeah. And then co-produced a credit. Yeah, it's a higher level credit. If you're a lot of people that are following this project don't know much about the film world, but the co-producer credit is is a much more highly regarded credit and they call it above the line. So it's like it's the first group in the credits that you'll see. And it's like the most important people in the movie, basically. Co- co-producer is really up there with the director. And um, we only have one, so buying in um, supports us, and it's like your money is is as valuable as uh, your effort to make the thing. In this case, plus you get all the hand, like the five hundred dollar worth of um, everything Ryan's going to make for you, um, and all the special VIP of invite in person premieres that were coming up. Um, we'll be treated Hi. like a king there. So there's some special. We need Special a party. Theory. I need an excuse to come over to America. Yeah. You're not so far away, right? You've been in Mexico. You can pop up to the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're you are the um the digital nomad right now, okay? Yeah. So you're I spent this is my eighth year living abroad from the States. I love it. It's yeah. the best. Wow. So yeah, you've had a lot of fun, you've done a lot of hard work, and now it's time to welcome your friends to yeah. support and get this out there so yeah thanks so much for um having the interview with me tonight i uh, enjoyed that and look forward to hearing yeah what happens in the next week it's exciting yeah yeah so denise's your book is available in the kickstarter um and we'll put the links in this video to where it will be available after the kickstarter is over so if anybody's watching this in the future if you want to buy her book um and the kickstarter is not running anymore uh, links in the show notes great okay um, what about your second book and your other project i know you've got other things going on after yeah, you're yeah, rising yeah. from the ashes mm. okay well that's that's uh, set the one set in medieval norwich so if you like history if you like the tudors king henry the eighth and some other lesser known characters in norwich then um that book's gonna that's available too i'll put the links in afterwards okay 
Sounds good. Are you and my band, else? my band is Peaceful Cacophony, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is a contrast between, you know, uh, two bandmates <laughs> who were like black and white, but that we just had such a great, um, you know, we just sparked off each other. So we, we decided that sometimes it was peaceful, sometimes it was cacophonous, and it just came out right somehow. So we've got loads of good songs we're, we're releasing, and you can buy them as individual tracks on Bandcamp. Yeah, so, there's actually been some um, conversation that in our Discord with some of the other creators that they're like, oh, I want to use Denise's song for this thing I'm doing. So yeah. there will be some collaborations that are coming out of that. You've definitely got some really fun um, catchy songs that are really much about liberation, which is really sure. on brand for our projects. I'm glad you're you're working with us. <laughs> yeah, so I think the earworm they were saying was uh, "Spare Me," and it's written about walking away from the witnesses and my mother, unfortunately. But that was 30 years ago, and still being in you know shunned. But um, I wasn't so angry anymore. I just wanted to express myself when I wrote that a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, I've done all sorts. I've done angry ones. I've done freedom songs, and then I've done peaceful ballads as well. And and David and I have, have you know really collaborate well on that. So he's a professional rock musician, so he's he's travelled with some really big bands in the last uh, seventeen years. And he does all the instruments and all the production. So it sounds really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. Sounds quite yeah, professional. You, <laughs> how could you, could you describe the peaceful cacophony um, interaction that you have? Like, what is the dynamic usually? How does it start? Who's the writer? Who's the, who has the inception? Yeah, so I, I basically, I'm the lyricist and the melody maker and the singer. And then everything else is David. He has written songs in the past that he's presented to various different stars for whatever reason. It Maybe it didn't get included in an album. And so I've said to him, let's have a listen. And I've liked some of his uh, back catalogue. So I've then sung for him or written the lyrics to a tune. Mm -hmm. So we kind of work both ways. We've both done um, everything like that together so um it's a mixture but yeah my forte is with lyrics and um yeah cool so yeah it's actually it. interestingly similar to cindy elvendahl in witness underground where she kind of starts she talks about in the movie how she asked her well maybe it's in the full interview uh for her father because her father played guitar like how do you give me three chords and she would like learn to play a few chords and then go in her room and like make a vocal melody and like some lyrics and that was like the inception of her making music. And then she got to, with this group of people and they were also doing it. And um, then that just became like her thing. Like she's this powerful vocalist and melody writer and would write like the base basic notes of the song to get it going. And then the whole rest of the artist would fill it in. So it's kind of interesting to see like another. Yeah, similar. that's great. I love that. You know, and um, yeah. Have okay. you played with others before or after that? Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of people that do um, play acoustic. So I've I've collaborated with them for venues like um, open mic nights where they do candlelight acoustic nights. Okay, that's so cool. I'm, I'm in Norwich. That locally, um, and then hopefully David will be um, coming on board. You know, to to fix up some rock. You know, plugged in as well. So very cool. Watch out for that in the next year. That's so fun. Yeah. Um, well, everyone check out Peaceful Cacophony and um, check in the campaign for Rising from the Ashes of the Jehovah's Witnesses. I've read it. It's a great memoir. And there's a bunch of self-help um, angles in there. It's valuable to our greater former um, religious people community. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for writing that. It's a, it's a big move to go write a book. Um, I'm actually thinking about starting my own. So hopefully in the next year, I'll have something in the works. I brought all my journals um, with me on my travels. Um, so I'm going to write something. Okay. Well, you know, can always come to me for some tips if you like. Okay. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. That's, so, the, that's the spirit of our, of our community here is like, yeah. we've all done something creative. Like we can get each other to give advice or work on the project. So. That's right. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks again, Denise, for coming on today and for being a part of the Witness Underground project and for helping with the Kickstarter. You're doing an awesome job. Um, 
and everyone join the Kickstarter. We were 65% yeah. of the way there. Um, we need nine days left. So really appreciate everyone's support. And if you can't support financially, um, share this video on YouTube, on Facebook, on social media with your friends, family. Direct outreach is king. People need to hear about this film. Good luck, Scott. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thanks, Denise. See you soon. Okay, see you. Bye. Yay, bye.